All right, so as Dean Finnegan said, I'm a fourth year PhD student in Biostat, and I'm gonna talk about some work that I've done with uh, uh, Professor Julian Wolfson and some uh, other folks over in the Humphrey School. So over the last few decades, our ability to quantify human health has improved dramatically. We, uh, as the prices of genetic sequencing and imaging modalities have gone down, we're now able to capture many different aspects of our physical state, and as a result, are beginning to understand how these affect our health. But at the same time, while we know that our habits and our behaviors also affect, have large health impacts, we understand little about the nature of these impacts or how to motivate the requisite behavior change. So what, why is this? Well, one of the major reasons is that uh, obstacles is that we are not able to collect reliable behavior data. So most traditional methods use either direct observation, which is prohibitively expensive, or, um, or self-report, where reliability is contingent upon the individual subjects themselves, who, like our uh, chagrined lady here, are fabulously bad at reporting on their own behavior. So a method for cheap collection of reliable behavior data would be a major step in the right direction. And a lot of the sort of advances in this area rely on sensor technology. These include specialized devices like Fitbits, as well as the sensors that are embedded in the smartphones that you and I carry with us every day. And smartphones contain a wide range of different sensors, but I'll talk just about two in particular. GPS, which measures speed and location, sort of large scale data, and accelerometers, which quantify the finer grain details of, of activity and movement. So here's what some of these raw sensor data look like. In the top plot, we see location data measured as longitude and latitude. The bottom two plots, we see speed and acceleration quantified as magnitudes over time. But on their own, these data provide little in the way of useful or actionable insights about the links between behavior and health. And so this is what has motivated research that I've been, the research group, to develop uh, an app called Dynamica, which uses various machine learning and other algorithms to convert these raw sensor data into uh, a daily summary like you see on the right. And we do this all with minimal user input. And so time, we can see, is partitioned into what we call activities, denoted in black text, and trips, denoted in green text. And activities capture how we spend the majority of time. For example, at home, work, eating out, or, or, um, or shopping. And trips quantify how we move from activity to activity. We might have, so Dynamica captures trip modes of walk, bike, car, bus, and rail. So in our example here, we can see that our individual left home at 8.14 a.m., took the train to grab breakfast before going to work for eight hours, and then returned home around 5 p.m. by the same route. Now we recognize that our machine learning algorithms are not 100% accurate, so we allow users to edit incorrectly inferred data using a screen like you see on the left panel. Additionally, users can augment their trip and activity data with additional information about their emotional state, their disposition, as well as other details relevant to the trip and activity. And so these details are customizable, which allows Dynamica to be employed in a wide range of different applications. So the potential public health uses for this are, are, are many, and I'm, so I'm going to focus on a few general themes and a few specific examples. But these are by no means exhaustive, and many of you might be able to employ Dynamica to augment your own data collection and your own research. So first, Dynamica might be used to characterize behavior patterns associated with health outcomes. An example of this might be monitoring exercise patterns in peripheral artery disease patients in rehab or identifying behavioral signatures associated with changes in symptoms of mental illness. The detailed data provided by Dynamica could also be used to enhance provider-patient discussions about healthy habits and behaviors, and it could also be used to optimize and dynamically deliver behavioral interventions, something that we have found notoriously difficult to do. And finally, this is a plug for my poster presentation. Uh, the, the individual high-resolution data provided by Dynamica can be used in, con in tandem with some novel statistical methodology to enable high precision individual level inference. So for the last bit here, I'm just gonna show some neat visualizations and things you can do with the Dynamica data. This is applied to a data set of 370 Minneapolis area individuals who use the app for one week each. So this is what we call the timeline, the timeline view for one user over one week of data. Each row represents a day from midnight to midnight and separate blocks represent different activities of different types. So we can see that our user is 
uh, a student, indicated by the purple education blocks on November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And also that our student has a non-standard work schedule, indicated by the work blocks on 11.5 and 11.6, early in the morning. We can also look, oops, we can also look at uh, outcomes over time. So here we see uh, self-reported happiness levels for car trips and walk trips as a function of trip duration. We can see that for shorter durations, happiness levels are similar between car and walk, but as duration increases, people become less happy in the car and happier on their walking trips. We can look at outcomes in geographical space. This is a spatially smoothed heat map of self-reported happiness levels for a particular region of the Twin Cities. And finally, we've recently developed a time use animation. In this animation, dots represent a person day. And as we advance time in the top left corner, we can watch as our users move from trips to activities to trips to activities. So briefly, here are the past and present research members of the Dynamica group. They've all contributed in some way to this work. And if you have any questions or are interested in using Dynamica for your own research, please don't hesitate to contact me or one of the other members. Thank you.